we were focusing on brand Zimbabwe. Right now we are in the Second Republic and we're trying to drive the conversation around how Zimbabwe can be great, how brand Zimbabwe can be driven out there into the world. And it is my pleasure to welcome, uh, just to have a bit of an overview of what we were discussing on the grill. Uh, thank you so much uh, to, to memory, uh, Usama. And uh, she is from Economita. She is uh, the general manager at Economita uh, Global Capital. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on the grill this morning. Thank you so much, Malika, for having us. Uh, Mr. Farai Mutondoro from Transparency International. Thank you also for joining us earlier on the grill. Thanks, Malika. Brand Zimbabwe, an overview, the discussion that we had at hand. And for those who are probably just joining us on our different social media platforms, they may want to have an appreciation. What are we talking about when we're saying Brand Zimbabwe? Memory. What we are talking about when we are talking about Brand Zimbabwe is we are saying Zimbabwe has got products. That's actually a thought. But is the international world seeing it that way? The international world is seeing it otherwise. Why? Because the foreign direct investment is not coming because of what we are doing in Zimbabwe. I think you would notice, Samonika, that say, corruption was the major driver mm. of a negative perception in Zimbabwe. And that is what we need to stamp out. Mm. So that at least going forward, we are going to have a better economy. We are going to have a favorable working condition. I was giving you an example of Rwanda. I think Mr. A.B. Cross gave us an example for China. Rwanda, because of genocide, is one of the countries which was devastated and destroyed because of that. But look at Rwanda at the moment. There are people, or there is one person who stood up and said, we need to make a change for Rwanda to change. And the economy of Rwanda is improving. It's not yet there, but it is improving. We as Zimbabwe, we are not supposed to have a negative perception for our country. We are supposed to stand up and say, this is where we are, but what is it that we need to do? Yes, we are having this Brand Zimbabwe Summit, perception as a disruptor, so that at least the people do not look at us with a negative eye. The world does not look at Zimbabwe with a negative eye. They see us taking a proactive, um, a, a proactive action to resolve the issues that we have. If it is corruption, let it actually tackle corruption, so that at least we do away with it and move on going forward. Many of us have heard uh, perception is key and looking at these uh, issues around perception, uh, corruption seems to be top on the list of uh, issues that need to be dealt with if uh, Zimbabwe is to be branded as a destination uh, of choice or as a destination for investment. Now, Farai, looking at uh, issues of corruption uh, from uh, Transparency International, um, ease of doing business, uh, measures, mechanisms, uh, policies, incorporating all those matters. What is your take to all these and looking at brand Zimbabwe moving forward. Can it be done? Are we on the right track? What needs to be put in place? Good. So I like the term that you have used, perception, uh, and I'll underline that term. Uh, Transparency International is this tool that we call the Corruption Perception Index that ranks global countries on a scale from zero to 100 in terms of what is the public perception with regard to corruption. Mm. So Zim is ranked as one of the countries with endemic corruption in the public sector. This is the perception of 14 or 13 people in critical key sectors, business-wise, investments. So because of corruption, um, there is capital flight. Because of corruption, no one would want to invest in a country where you're not guaranteed of the money that you've invested. So I think most recently, the World Bank uh, study noted that corruption is the fifth most binding factor to ease of doing business. So for Zimbabwe to have a good, positive brand and for Zimbabwe to take advantage of the natural resources that it is naturally endowed with, the 55 minerals, the lithium that we're talking about, the gold, the platinum, the human resource, the human capital, the intellectual capital, we need to confront corruption head on. So TI, TI Zimbabwe, yes, this campaign that we want to situate on the Brand Zimbabwe Summit, we are calling it a campaign for the development and effective implementation of a national anti-corruption strategy. Why are we talking about a strategy at such a moment? The government of the day has put in place good and wonderful policy initiatives, but the lacuna is that there is lack of a coordinating framework. Who is doing what? Who is measuring? Who is monitoring? So the, the president is talking about the mandatory declaration of assets, but is the public aware that someone has declared their assets? There is no information disclosure to citizens whose perceptions are critical. The president is talking about the anti-corruption courts, but do people know how these courts are operating? The president has spoken about an anti-corruption agenda. 
but who is leading that? So the national anti-corruption strategy that TI is talking about is uh, a provision in the United Nations Convention Against Corruption to which Zimbabwe is a signatory to. So we've committed ourselves to the what we call ANCAC. More, more so, the anti-corruption strategy allows citizens to have a role and to have a say in the fight against corruption. More critically, South Africa has done it. The anti-corruption strategy, the beauty of it is that it allows critical stakeholders to prioritize where should our forces or energy be focused on in the next two, three, four, five years. Do we need to fight land <coughs> corruption? Do we need to talk about corruption in the extractive sector? Do we need to fight gendered corruption? What should we prioritize? And the last thing is about monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. So I think it is in, this, in the interest of government, it is in the interest of the Zimbabwe's open for business mantra to join this with a national anti-corruption strategy. This is our input. This is what we're bringing on the table on the Brands Global Summit. Okay, we don't have much time on our side, but memory, I will ask. It seems the conversation is always uh, driven towards uh, looking at what is government doing. It's always like, what is government doing? What is uh, the public and private sector doing? But are we also focusing on the citizens themselves? Are they doing enough as citizens of Zimbabwe to ensure that Brand Zimbabwe is attractive? Thank you, Monica. The citizens are doing uh, what I would say, uh, I wouldn't say they are doing enough. They are not doing enough because they're actually the ones that are more negative about what is happening. I will tell you what happened um, last week. I went to a shop and they asked for a pair of shoes. And they said the shoes are going for, that pair of shoes is going for $35. Then I said, okay, if I am to bring, to pay eco, we're using eco cash, how much are those shoes? And they said it's 125 then I said, okay, how did you it come to 125? And then he was telling me that the right. So already we are the ones who are killing the economy. At the same time, the government has to play their role by actually keeping out corruption, doing what we need to do to have a favorable uh, working environment, a favorable economy in our country. So right now the public is doing something that can actually kills what the government is building. Yet the government also is trying by all its level best to ensure that Zimbabwe actually goes back to where it was before. Remember Zimbabwe used to be the breadbasket of the Africa, but at the moment we are no longer the same. We are actually one of the ranked, one of the worst as it is. But we are saying, can we dwell in that same situation? No, we need to move on. We need to stand up. We need to say, no, this is not what we want. Going forward, we need to have policies that are going to enhance the economy, policies that are going to make people change the way they think, the way they view things, the way they, they want to be known for as Zimbabweans. Hmm. Memory Uzman, General Manager for Economita Global Capital, and uh, Farai Mutondoro from Transparency International. Thank you both uh, for joining us here on this uh, short conversation as we speak to the nation. And uh, we look forward uh, to hearing more about uh, Brand Zimbabwe, your summit uh, taking place uh, that's uh, for tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow from 8 o'clock up to 4 at Crown Plaza Great Indaba in Harare. Thank you so much. So we are inviting all of the uh, Zimbabweans, uh, captains of industry, uh, leaders of uh, corporates to come and join us and everyone who is willing to be part of the Brand Zimbabwe Summit, they are all welcome to come. Thank you. Well, Brand Zimbabwe it is. We are in the Second Republic and Classic 263 is now talking and we are trying to drive that conversation around how we can position Zimbabwe. It's Classic 263. Join us on our live stream www.classic263.co.zw. You can catch some of our videos on YouTube 